Thanks, Pappy. Well, welcome everybody to our Tuesday Inspiration. We're so excited to see you all here today. Uh, thank you for joining us. If you've been with us on our campfires uh, before, you know kind of what this format's gonna look like. So we have a couple of ground rules. First of all, we wanna make sure that everyone is muted during this so that we can hear the speakers and hear the songs. Uh, and it's also best if you put yourself on speaker view, so at the top right hand corner, that way you can see who's talking uh, and who's singing during all of this. So today we are going to be talking about catering. Um, and first, I'm going to toss it over to Pappy, who's going to tell us about morning inspiration and why we do it. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to morning inspiration. Woohoo! So if we were in a real camp, Last night at the Sunday campfire, opening campfire, you would have learned that uh, the Wisen opened door since 1844, uh, which is actually not exactly true. The Y uh, began in 1844, and what was going on in 1844 was the Industrial Revolution. And in the city of London, England, there were lots of factories being built to build all the new inventions that were coming along, like the sewing machine and the washing machine and things like that. And uh, kids your age, youngsters that were camp age, that had never been away from their, their homes on their farms in the country, were coming into the city to get jobs in these big factories. And uh, there were lots of bad people in the city who were preying on those youngsters. And uh, there was a nice man by the name of George Williams, who saw this going on, and he thought there needed to be, they needed some help. And his solution was to invite some boys to his house to study the Bible. They thought if, he thought if they could study the Bible, they could fortify themselves against the, the bad things that were happening in the city. And uh, so it became popular and it caught on. And it became known as the Young Men's Christian Association or the YMCA. And um, the YMCA existed in England and then in America and then around the world as a male Christian organization right up until the 1960s. And in the 1960s, why we opened our doors to women, and shortly after that, we opened our doors to all religions and all creeds and, and uh, races and so on. And that became kind of confusing because um, uh, people didn't quite, were a little bit offended by our, our Christian message. They wanted to utilize the why, but they didn't necessarily want to, want to be preached to. And so uh, we had to develop a language that was universal to all the different religions in the world. And that language was called uh, uh, character counts or, or we, what, what came out of that was our four core values. And those four core values, of course, are respect, responsibility, caring, and honesty. Say that with me, respect, responsibility, caring, and honesty. Great, you're all muted. And <laughs> And so today, our core value is going to be caring. And we're going to talk about caring and tell stories about caring and read quotes about caring and sing songs about caring. And right now, we're going to sing a song that I'm sure you all know. And it's called, Ah, la, 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 And it goes like this. Ah, la, 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 Now you do what the song said. Shake, shake a hand, shake a hand next to you. Shake, shake a hand and sing la la. Shake, shake a hand, shake a hand next to you. Shake, shake a hand and sing. Hallelujah. 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 H
Now be very careful. Tickle a knee, tickle a knee, then skip ya. Tickle a knee and sing la la. Tickle a knee, tickle a knee, then skip ya. Tickle a knee and sing. Definitely. Thanks, Emma. So my quote today is from Margaret Mead. The quote is, never believe that a few caring people can't change the world, for indeed, that's all who ever have. So I really like this quote, and I think that like, when you get down to what this quote's trying to get to is that any and everybody can make a difference and change the world just by showing each other a lot of caring. You know, it doesn't have to be big acts. It can be those little acts that we find ourselves throughout the day, whether it's checking in on a friend, helping out around the house, or any other ways that you can think of to show people that you care. So that's kind of what I got from that quote, Emma. Thanks, Logan. And then I'm going to have Heidi, the wonderful, wonderful Heidi, share our second quote. Thanks, Emma. Um, this quote is by Anthony J. D'Angelo. Without a sense of caring, there can be no sense of community. And um, we all the time refer to ourselves as belonging to the Y community. And we are lucky to belong to a community that cares so much. So right now with everybody having to stay at home, it is so important that we can reach out to one another, make sure we're all doing okay, See if there's anything that someone in our community needs and just let them know that we care and we're still here for them. Awesome, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for sharing those quotes. We're gonna share some more as we go on and just think about what you think those quotes mean. If you'd like to share, you can share in that chat window with us. Now I'm gonna throw it over to Scotty who's gonna share a story with us today about hearing. And I changed my story today because I, I came up with one that's more appropriate for what we're living through. Um, There's a young woman who was just out of college. She couldn't find a job yet. She was back at home with her family. It's kind of appropriate for now because it feels like this time when you don't know what's next in life. You don't know what's coming up and things were going hard. She had been in a relationship and it was recently over. You know, so she's jobless and has no money and living at home and things just seem tough. And she went to her mom and she said, Mom, what, what do I what do I do? Things are just rough right now. I don't I feel like just giving up. And the mom said, Hey, come with me. And they she took her to the kitchen. She had some carrots and she put them on the cutting board and kind of chopped them up and added them to a pot of boiling water. Uh she had some eggs. She took three eggs and you know, and put the eggs also in another pot of boiling water. And then she had some coffee beans and she kind of ground up the coffee beans and she added those to a pot of boiling water. She let all of them go for about 15, 20 minutes and she took each off. And she asked the daughter, she said, you know, she kind of took them out and put them on a plate and she took, took out the carrots and put them on a plate. She took out the eggs and put them on a plate. She took out the coffee and kind of strained the coffee and put it into a coffee cup and asked the daughter, you know, what do you see here? And the daughter looks, she goes, well, I see, you know, carrots and some eggs and some coffee. And the mom goes, no, you got to look a little bit closer because something happened here. And the mom said, each one of these, the carrots, the eggs, and the coffee went through the same kind of tough thing. And the boiling water was the tough thing that they had each been through the same thing. The carrots, the situation, the water, had changed them completely and made them kind of soft and mushy. The eggs looked exactly the same from the, in, from the outside, but on the inside, it had dramatically changed the inside of what the egg had been through. 
And then she took the cup of coffee and the, the daughter kind of had a sip and said it was delicious. And the coffee, instead of being changed by the tough situation, the coffee changed the situation around it to make something better. Now, I tell this story today because we're all kind of living through that. And what's interesting is as kids, this feels different than it does for adults. Adults might be kind of worried about you. We might be kind of worried about you finishing the school year and where you are academically. Are we going to be able to read or learn or do things through this time? But you as kids that are there, you have an opportunity. This might feel different for you. And here's what I'm posing. Because we want to be caring people and we want to make our community better, think about what you can do. You have a lot of time on your hands. Think about what you can bring to the table these days to make someone's day brighter. Think about the cards you can make. Think about something you could write to your mom, your dad, whoever you live with. Just write them a note to say, you know, thanks for doing this or thanks for doing this or thank the mailman, thank the, any of the essential workers that are moving by. Put a little sign in the window of your house just saying thank you to essential workers. But figure out what you can do to turn your situation and be more like the coffee. Be the one that instead of being changed by the situation, that you did your part to make it all better for others. That's how we can be caring today. Thanks, Scotty. Um, and as you think of those things, we're going to have a little bit of a discussion about the different ways that we can show caring and be caring to other people. So if you have some ideas, feel free to share it um, in the comments. That way we can all find a way to be more caring. So I'm going to throw it to Lincoln now with our third quote. Lincoln, can you go ahead and share that? Absolutely. Um, thank you, Emma. And thank you, Scotty and Pappy. Uh, for putting this together and having everyone do this. I've got a great quote here for you. I'm just going to pull it up here for a second. Okay, cool. So uh, this quote comes to us from Maya Angelou. Angelou? Angelou? Angelou. Angelou. Angelou, thank you. Um, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how they made you feel or how um how you made them feel um and so what that basically means i'm thinking about what that means here is that like um we do a lot of stuff in our day we do a lot of stuff in the world um but what do we do that affects other people in a good way specifically like caring for other people that's the stuff that lasts and that's the stuff that sticks in our world um and that's what we're going to be remembered by but also it's the impact we can make and it's how we can make the world a better place um so that's my thoughts right there that's a great quote thank you thanks lincoln and then sam has our fourth quote so sam if you wouldn't mind hopping on and sharing that with us Sam, no Sam. sound. Unmute. Is it, can you hear me now? Yay, okay. <laughs> I'll read it again. Be kinder than necessary for everyone you meet is fighting some kind of battle. Um, I like this quote a lot because it reminds us to be considerate um, as well as kind. So a lot of times people might be struggling with things that you can't necessarily see. So it's really important that we are giving everyone the benefit of the doubt and being as kind as possible. Thanks, Sam. And I want to share a quote that Tegan put up, um, which is from Wicked. And whichever way our stories end, I know that you've written mine by being my friend. So thanks for sharing that, Tegan. Okay, so we're going to move into our discussion um, where we talk about how we can be more caring in our lives. So I'm going to bring on a couple of people that we've heard from and a couple we haven't yet. Um, and they're going to answer the questions that I posed to them, but I would also love it if you would answer those questions too in the chat um, so we can share ways that we can be caring. So Logan, uh, how can we be caring to one another? Ooh, good question, Emma. Uh, you know, one of the ways I really like to show people that I care uh, and really care about them is, is time, you know, giving them the opportunity to, to give yourself the opportunity to get to know them. You know, one of the things I enjoy doing is learning 
about people's like hobbies and interests. And it's an opportunity for them to talk about something they're really passionate about, but it's also an opportunity for you to learn something new and exciting. And, and you get to create these awesome bonds and, and really connect on that level. Um, I also like to show people that I'm caring, even if it's something that's, that might feel a little weird, I really like to say, hey, I appreciate what you do for me, or I appreciate that you're in my life. It's something that small can go a long way for letting people know that you really care for them. Um, it can come out of the blue. It can just be random. You can wake up one morning and just send that to a friend and let them know that you care for them. Um, and that's how I really like to show people uh, that I care for them. Yeah. Thanks, Logan. Uh, we also have Scotty said, we have so much time now. We can also connect with other people. Um, Holly said playing ball with Oreo, who's her dog, and just having, letting Oreo have a great day too. Uh, so Lincoln, I'm going to ask you to answer this next question. Um, what are some ways that we can show we care about people, even if we can't visit them right now? Oh my gosh, there's so many ways to, to show people that you, you care about them, even if you can't visit them. I think I think one of my favorite ways, though, it's so simple. Um, if you if you call or if you write a letter to someone or you're able to Zoom video uh, chat with them or other ways, it's a simple, simple, small thing you can do, which is just to say, "How are you?" Just to ask how they are doing, what they are they're going through, and take a moment out of your life to listen to where another person is in their life and share their story and their thoughts. Um, it's such an amazing way to show that you care about that person because you're giving them the time of day and you're willing to listen to where they are in their life. It's powerful. How are you? I'm doing great, Logan. Like, thanks for asking. It happens we mix up each other's names. It's okay. Thanks for asking, Lincoln. And I know I appreciate it when you give me a video call during the day. And my mom loves it when I call and I've been trying to call my friends too, just so we can stay in contact. I've also seen some suggestions from people in the comments of, of some of the power that camp can have, like sharing the Raisin Bran song uh, with other people to help brighten their day. So moving so moving on to the last question I have for Katie is what's uh, one way that we can be more caring today? Yes, Emma, thank you for letting me share. And this is a great one for all of you to post in the comments. One thing that you think you can do, and I'll read those out after I share. Um, so I've been thinking, you know, a little bit about this question and how we can be more caring during this time. And my main one is kind of what Logan and Lincoln were acknowledging, but is to reach out to others around you uh, from six feet, you know? So I've been spending a lot of time on my porch, my front porch, drinking my coffee in the morning. And today I decided that I was going to smile and say hello, a little greeting to everyone that walks by. I'm in a very popular neighborhood, so there is a lot of people walking by. And a lot of people, you know, we're walking with our head down and we're trying to stay away from others, but you can still smile and say hello from my 10 feet away. So I think that it's just something to keep in mind that being caring can easily just be a smile to your neighbor or a wave to the person across the street. Um, and I think that even if you can't, you know, talk to others, but that wave to the garbage man and to the recycling people are great ways to spread that caring from your front porch and from your house, your caring ways. Um, Scotty's saying thank you notes for those essential folks. That's awesome. Posted, we see a lot in Windows these days of posting. Um, shout out to Jamie for those daily Zoom calls. I know a lot of those are doing, are happening right now to mom and families. And hosting family game night is amazing. You can be caring for even the ones in your house because we're spending a lot of time with our families in our houses right now and being caring to them is a big way to do it. And happy being happy. We are just thankful for your, you and Lincoln's relationship is what I see from that other, that other part there of calling each other out and thanking each other for being silly is a great way to, to show everyone you care. So, oh, last one from Heidi. Uh, when we were hugging ourselves, that just really helps us realize how much we do miss hugs. And so give those virtual hugs over Zoom and over text. I sign my emails now with virtual hug from Miss Nardi to make my students smile. So, and last one here from Maya, who's 10, 
says that she can be caring by helping feed the family pet with chores and meals. Your family and your parents are so grateful for that help, Maya, that you're doing. So keep sharing that caring every day. Thanks, Emma. Thanks for sharing, Katie, and I love all those ideas. Keep them coming as we think of these small ways to be a little bit more caring to each other during these times, especially if you can make friendship bracelets that I know you all learned that camp. Um, and we also shared a video about if you want to share that with other people as a way to show how much you care for them during this time. Uh, and with that, I'm going to toss it back to Pappy, um, who's going to lead us in our next song. <laughs> Here we go, we're gonna take a seed and plant it in the earth. Take a seed and plant it in the earth. your tree come lots of seeds they are scattered far and wide by the birds and bees and with loving care they grow and grow and you've got a forest of trees before you know now anyone can plant a seed loving care is what they so let's pretend that we're all seen. I will care for you, you care for me. What? What was that? I will care for you, you care for me. In this little song, is a kind of a sea. You can sing it any time you need. When you are alone. Or in a crowd, you can sing it to yourself or sing it out loud. Now anyone can plant a seed. Loving care is what they need. So let's pretend that we're all seed. I will care for you. You care for me. What? I will care for you, you care for me. And if you're blue and you can't get free, go out in the forest and hug a tree. And remember this from a seed's eye view. Well, there's really not much difference between you two. Cause anyone can plant a seed. Loving care is what they need. So let's pretend that we're all seeds. I will care for you, you care for me. Wait, wait, what? I will care for you, you care for me. Can't quite hear you. I will care for you, you care for me. Turn to somebody next to you. I will care for you. Turn to somebody behind you. I will care for you. You care for me. Now somebody on the other side. I will care for you. You care for me. <laughs> okay, wrap your arms around yourself and give yourself the great big hug and sing to you. I will care for you. You care for me. Thank you, Pappy. I love seeing everyone pointing to each other, showing that we're going to care for one another during this time. Um, Jen, if you would pop on and share your next quote with us as well. Awesome. All right. Um, too often we underestimate the power of a smile, a kind word, a listening ear, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. Um, just being like, just everything that says is just so awesome. Um, a, a simple smile can be infectious. Um, you know, anything and everything, like we talked about earlier, all the things that Katie kind of talked about, just like smiling and waving at people. You know, we have to keep 
that distance when, when we're around, you know, people like walking outside, if there's someone on a walk, just saying hi, you know, spreading that, that kindness and that caring and that happiness, um, every way in any way that we can, even the little things, um, are really important right now. So I think, I think that quote is super awesome for that. Thanks, Jen. And if you need a smile, I would encourage just scroll through some of the faces that we have with us today at Tuesday Inspiration. And if that doesn't make you smile, I don't know what will because there's a lot of smiling faces. All right. And then I'm going to bring Katie back on for our last quote. Katie, can you share that quote with us? Yes, this is a great quote to end on. This is a quote by Donna Favors. What a name, first of all. Her quote is, life has taught me that caring and love must be shared, for it is through sharing that friendships are born. Shout out to Donna. This quote uh, definitely is important right now because like we've all said, reaching out through a phone call or a Zoom shows that you want to share that life with other people. And it can be easier to just stay home and read books and stick to yourself. But it's through moments like this and calling your mom and your family and sharing with others and checking in with them saying, I know it's been a while, but how are you can really just change their day around. And we all need that positive light right now. So go be that positive light for others. Thanks, Katie. Oh, thank you all so much for joining us today. I hope you learned a little bit more about caring and got some ideas of how we can be caring uh, during this time from each other. And I'm going to toss it over to Scotty because it sounds like he has something he wants to talk about before we close out today. Oh, did I? I was waving to others. Um, I'll close today, though. Really cool to be part of this Zoom thing, you know, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, hopefully you all can stay connected with us through this. We're riding this thing the same way you are. And we're happy to like get out and see your faces are kind of our inspiration because we're going through the same uh, things you're going through at home. You know, too much time together. Nice for us to get out and see some new people. Uh, and we're thrilled to have you guys come out. Join us Friday for our campfire at two o'clock. Don't forget if you, it's on the Facebook page. If you have trouble sharing the link or people, will, I see lots of people putting up numbers and things. I don't know what any of that means. So you all have a great day. I was going to say Wednesday. I don't know what day it is. Uh, have a great day and we'll see you guys in the near future. All right. Pappy's going to sing us out with Lean On Me, so please join in. Bill Withers. Bill Withers died. Sometimes in our life we all have pain. We all have sorrow.